What do you feel like doing today, Allison? How about taking a walk in the country? Sounds good to me. Mm, great weather for it. Mm-hmm. Don't you hate it when a nice, relaxing stroll gets interrupted by a slime attack? Actually, I love it. I love it, too. <laughs> yeah! Welcome to Nintendo Week. I'm Allison. And I'm Gary. Today we'll dive deeper into Dragon Quest IX, Sentinels of the Starry Skies. And we'll show you how to share your adventure with friends with multiplayer mode and the new tag mode feature. Let's do it! One of the best ways to experience Dragon Quest IX is to play in multiplayer mode with friends via a local wireless network connection. You want to join my game, Gary? Sure. To start multiplayer mode, visit Pavo in Aaron's Inn. She'll open the Reportal, which transports you into a friend's game, or you can invite a friend into yours. You can play with up to three other people at a time in multiplayer mode. Here we go. Pavo is asking me what she can do for me. I want to visit another world. Yes, I wish to venture into the world of Alice. There you are. Cool. Nice purple hair. Thanks. In multiplayer mode, you can stick together or split up and explore on your own. If we decide to split up and then I get into trouble, I can send Gary a call to arms. Allison is crying out for help. Will you comply with her call to arms? Yes, I will. Thank goodness. Let's see what we have here. Ooh, a winkster and a bubble slime. We're on it. I'll do the winkster. All right, then I'll attack the bubble slime. Okay, good team. When Gary joins my game, he can keep all of the experience and gold he earns, but only my game advances. If you join a more experienced character's game, you'll have the opportunity to battle harder monsters, which will make your experience and levels rise more quickly. And if a stronger player joins your game, their character can help yours with difficult battles. Two great reasons to play with a friend or a friends. At the beginning of Dragon Quest IX, your character's job type is minstrel. But you don't have to stay in that profession forever. As you progress through the game, you will eventually reach and unlock All Trades Abbey. Then you'll be able to change your character's job. At first, only six job types are available. Martial Artist, Warrior, Mage, Priest, Thief, and Minstrel. Each one has benefits and drawbacks. For example, Priests are specialists in medical magic, but they're low on strength and warriors can't cast spells, but they're mighty fighters. An additional six job types will be unlocked when you complete future quests. Switching jobs and then leveling up can expand your character's abilities and skills, making you more powerful and versatile. And when you change jobs, any new skills you've gained stay with your character. Change is definitely a good thing. Tag mode is another great way to share the Dragon Quest IX experience with other players. Let's go chat with Aaron and try it out. Canvas for guests? Canvas for guests, you got it. As you can see, my game is already in tag mode, so now it's searching for other guests. Once Gary puts his game into tag mode, he'll show up on mine, Minstrel Gary. And there you are, Swordswoman Allison. When our games find each other, they exchange data about our characters, our names, special greetings, avatars, and battle records. Okay, I'm going to head into the lounge. And look, Gary, there's your avatar. I can just go right up to him. And go adventuring. And up top, I can see your battle record, your number of victories, 73 victories. Yeah. Wow, very impressive. All right, it looks like I got a map from you, Gary. The Granite Tunnel of Woe, level one. Hm. Treasure maps are extremely important. Each one is unique and leads to a secret dungeon, which can only be accessed if you have that specific treasure map. These dungeons have monsters, treasure chests, and boss battles. In dungeons, you can get your hands on weapons and other special items that aren't available in story mode. 
can earn one treasure map by playing the main quest and one more by beating the dungeon boss. But by trading treasure maps with other people using tag mode, you can keep adding to the adventure. Some of the maps you collect through tag mode may be too challenging to defeat right away, so you'll need to wait until your character is more powerful to try them out, or get help from a more experienced character. If you leave the game on in tag mode in your pocket or bag, other players who have tag mode on can trade info and maps with you just by passing by. It's the mode that keeps on giving, and taking, and trading. So, we've talked about what you can do with the local wireless connection, but Dragon Quest IX also makes use of the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Use it to visit DQVC, the online store. Here you can spend in-game currency on weapons and accessories for your character. The selection is huge and it changes daily. You can also download seasonally themed quests so the gameplay will stay fresh. And now, even though the adventure in Dragon Quest IX is just beginning, it's time for Nintendo Week to end. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week with more games for the Wii and DS systems. See you then!